Super. So, Grant, you were one of the pioneers here in the region. You started making wine in in 93. Can you explain to us what Central Otago was like back then? Um, How many hectares were planted, how many people were making wine here and and what you were making? Right, that's easily done. I can remember that far back. Um, I sometimes think I've almost probably enjoyed it. I'm loving it, but they were just fun times. You know, no one had made wine down here seriously before. Um, so we couldn't do anything wrong. It was just like kids in a sandpit, just playing and, and sort of, it's not like being the first man on the moon, but it's, but it's probably as close to it as any winemaker can get. Uh, there, was a, there was, I think, four winemakers down here at the time when I turned up in 93. Excellent. Uh, it's not four, four. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, what, and what was everyone around New Zealand saying about you? <laughs> I, I think I, I turned up a little bit after the first people planted. So there's been vines planted for five, six, seven years before that. And I think people stopped saying how crazy people were beforehand, but I would read earlier articles or hear about how the pioneers, like Alan, true pioneers, Alan Brady from Gibson Valley or Rolf Mills from Ripon and Pinkney from Taramia Wines, how they were, you know, almost certifiably crazy thinking of planting grapes down here. So I turned up in 93 after they'd been established a little bit, so I didn't get any of that put upon me. Um, but there was, only, there was only 40 acres still planted then, and now I think there's more than 5,000. Excellent. And what is, why did people think that you were play crazy to be planting or working in central Otago? What, what is it about the region? Can you describe it in terms of climate, location? Yeah, well, it's, it's much further south than any of other New Zealand's wine regions. Um, or in the world, in fact. Yeah, I think there's <laughs> some argument about somewhere in Patagonia, but yeah, we'll, leave that, couple. we'll leave that one out of this discussion. Uh, and you know, Otago is known for being very, very cold and, and cold winters, you know, frost, snow. Um, and I think people hadn't really, the people criticizing hadn't looked overseas and perhaps looked at some places where wines were being grow, grown. You know, in Germany, with places, um, Northern Hemisphere, it's minus 15, minus 16, and you know, they'll cover the vines up in the wintertime. Here, it's maybe minus 7, minus 8. It's, a, it's, it's beneficial, it's just a nice cold, um, nice cold winter. Uh, so I guess people just didn't think that. I think well, part of it too is varieties. We'd, they'd grown things up further north, and you know, they'd Bordeaux varieties and Sauvignon Blanc, and they were, had that in their mindset when they're saying you can't grow grapes further south. But you know, with, with, they weren't thinking Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, or Riesling. I think, so there's a couple of things that worked there. Sorry. That's okay. And when you arrived, um, uh, there were still experimental plantings of lots of different varieties. What was being planted here at the time and, and why is it that, that Pinot Noir kind of really emerged as the champion grape in your opinion? Yes, it was 40 acres when I turned up and um, now Pinot Noir is probably 80% of the region. Back then it was probably 20. Uh, there was, you know, Ostein, Chasselas, everybody planted a number of varieties, Muller Turgau, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, so it was almost everything. So very much seeing which varieties uh, suited the region and Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris, especially in Gibston, which where I was at the time, those varieties just ripened better than the other ones. They, they said, look, we, we like this place. We're ripe and we, you recently might be 16% sugar. We're 22, you know, pick us, you know, choose us. Um, so it's, you know, the, the varieties really just put their hand up and said, I like it here, and they were, they're the ones we focused on. Excellent. And now people also make Riesling, and you make a nice Riesling, and some Chardonnay is popular in the region too. But are there any other varieties that you think in the future, if you were to kind of replant and, and, and start again, is there anything that you would also try and, and work with here? Gruner, there's quite a bit of that being planted. It's, it's, a significant amount being planted now. Uh, what I probably would like to see is, you've visited the region, the hottest part of Central Otago is Bendigo. I like there's some Syrah planted. I'd like to see more Syrah planted. Um, I think if we have the patient, you know, we're in a cool climate, don't overcrop, let those vines get established. I think that warmer part could be uh, could make some wonderful cool climate Syrahs. Excellent. Uh, so at Valley, you, you specialise in working with different vineyards in Central Otago. Can right. you explain to me the different wine regions that you work within in Central Otago and how they're different from each other? Right. Well, Gibston, which is where we are now, um, further west, higher elevation, is, is the coolest sub-region. Gets quite a bit more rainfall than either Bendigo or Bannockburn. The soils here are a bit, bit richer, but there's more organic matter in them. Soils are a little bit more vigorous. Would be being the cooler climate of Central Otago, it doesn't have the alcohol that perhaps 
the Cromwell Basin wines have, both Bendigo, Bannockburn and Bigger and Alcohol. But for me, that's a bonus. You know, I'm, I'm looking, I enjoy naturally lower alcohol wines. Uh, and it lives on its acidity. And for me, that's what Pinot Noir does. Perhaps Cabernet, the structure lives on its tannins. But for me, Pinot lives on its acid and, and much, much finer tannin. And that's what Gibson gives us. And they're, they're more floral, they're perfumed, they're more aromatic. They're not, if there's fruits there, they're red fruit. They're not big, dark plum or cherry. They're not dark fruits. They're really, really perfumed and pretty. And then we go through to the Cromwell Basin, uh, Bannockburn, just a little bit more silt, a bit sandier soils. It's quite a lot warmer, so you're catching a bit more fruit. The, the, the classic cherry fruit characteristics come from those wines. A little bit more tannin and a little bit more structure. Um, and Bendigo is the warmest sub-region, so they're, they're bigger, more powerful, uh, darker wines. Excellent. Fantastic. And then your other region that you... Um very famously work with is in North Otago. Can you tell me about the other Valley wine region that you... Yeah, so North Otago, it's um, further north, so you think it would be perhaps a little bit warmer than Central Otago, but it's not. It's a more maritime climate. It's very much coastal influenced. You know, here we are probably 300, 400 metres above sea level. There, it's in, in surrounded by mountains. In the Waitaki, we're open to the ocean, probably 80, 90 metres above sea level a lot of cool easterly weather comes in from the ocean so much much cooler climate incredibly long growing season i, I think we fl set and, f and flower about the same time as central otago but typically pick three four maybe five weeks later so much longer hang time uh, lower sugar accumulation because it's not as hot cooler climate we keep a lot more acidity in the wines we always have a for me they've got a lot of energy and, and vibrancy um, and limestone soil here you can see the sort of about this sort of grey rocky this is we're basically schist based in central Otago the Waitaki Valley is sort of limestone so there's a minerality and silkiness that runs through a lot of the wines Excellent. Fantastic.